Good day. Thank you for tuning in to this 2019 General Election Candidate Forum for Olympia City Council position number two. The forum is presented by the League of Women Voters of Thurston County and Thurston Community Media. The League is a nonprofit organization that encourages the informed and active participation of citizens in their government. The League neither supports nor opposes candidates or parties. We are nonpartisan. The League registers new voters, works to get out the vote, studies issues, and advocates for its positions with governing bodies. Despite its name, the League is open to both men and women of age 16 and up. I'm Peggy Bruton from the League, and I'll be moderating this forum. The candidates for Olympia City Council position number two are Jessica Bateman and Phyllis Booth. Each candidate will have two minutes for an opening statement. Then I'll ask questions in alternating order. The person first asked the question will have two minutes for a response, followed by one minute from the other candidate. There will be one minute for closing statements at the end. We'll begin with opening statements from the candidates, beginning with Jessica Bateman, followed by Phyllis Booth. Hi, my name is Jessica Bateman and I'm running for re-election to the Olympia City Council. It's been an honor to serve as your council member for the last four years and mayor pro tem since January. I've been working for the last three and a half years to address homelessness and housing. I've worked to, uh, I passed, I led the campaign to pass the Home Fund, which is now generating $2.3 million a year and we'll be moving forward with our very first project, beginning construction in mid 2020 with 120 units of permanent supportive housing and shelter. I've also worked to increase capacity within our continuum of services for our vulnerable community members, including our Plum Street Village, our downtown stability site, partnering with the Providence Community Care Center and faith-based organizations so they can host tiny houses on their property. I've also worked to make Olympia a safer and more inclusive community. I sponsored our city's Sanctuary City Resolution, which passed unanimously in December of 2016 and guarantees that all Olympians are safe and welcome regardless of their immigration status. We've also worked to increase our downtown walking patrol create our Familiar Faces Program and Crisis Response Unit, and expand our community court, which is diverting individuals out of the criminal justice system. As we move forward, we must be bold and create more housing, increase tenant protections, and reduce our climate impact by reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. We also need to increase and enhance the vitality of our downtown. I'm excited to continue this service, and I'm looking forward to the conversation. Phyllis? Yes. Um, my name is Phyllis Booth, and I've lived in the area of Thurston County and City of Olympia, a combination of about 30 years. I've served in a variety of areas. I've attended about seven years worth of council meetings and confronted a variety of issues, one of which was a corporate conference center of which there would be a, a million dollars of your tax money going to um, subsidize the effort. Um, I've also, and when, I, when we won on that effort, I, uh, the money was diverted to our children's museum. So that's one of the legacies that I worked hard to achieve. And I also have worked with Coyote Village since its beginning, uh, when it was in the camps. I have worked with the homeless for about 30 years as a volunteer. I have a lot of good ideas uh, about to help that would be less expensive and more empowering uh, to the community. I also have worked 12 years in the school district. I work as a free clinic nurse, and I have worked with American Red Cross and hospice services. I've worked with so many different uh, wonderful citizens. I think I can bring a whole new perspective to the Olympia City Council. Okay, thanks, Phyllis um, and Jessica. Uh, we'll start with Phyllis for this, uh, the first question. As part of the Thurston Climate Mitigation Plan uh, with Tumwater, Lacey, and the county, Olympia is working with Thurston Regional Planning Council to address climate change issues. What action items do you support, and how do you propose to further these efforts? With climate change, 
Well, first of all, I think that we need to divert our uh, building from the areas of the uh, Olympia area that we have been building in because that's full of fill, it's pr prone to flooding. Um, yes, we need housing, but we need housing in a, in a place that will be more stable. Uh, we need to pay attention as we go along with uh, the reports, the National o Oceanic and Atmospheric Association says we're gonna have uh, sea level rise by the end of the century between three to uh, six feet. And we need to uh, have a plan to uh, relocate a lot as, with satellites because it's, it's right there in, in the area that's gonna be affected. Um, we also need to encourage more bus ridership. In my area where I live, the county has put in uh, 24 million worth of roundabouts. Uh, there's one person, one car, and the schools are also full, full of cars instead of uh, putting the children on the bus ridership. We all affect each other's lives because the more that we do not carpool and the more that we uh, ride in one car, one person, we're contributing pollutants to Puget Sound, which affects our salmon and our orcas, and we just need to uh, put development uh, in areas where it doesn't affect nature. Uh, we have Westman Mills right on top of an estuary. I would like for a team of scientists to be part of our city council as far as an ad hoc committee that could serve and give great advice. Thanks, Phyllis. Uh, Jessica, one minute. Thank you. Well, I think first it's imperative that we plan for adapting to climate change regionally. So I'm really excited that we're moving forward with that regional plan. The two biggest ways that we reduce our greenhouse gas emissions are through vehicle miles travels, traveled and how we build and construct our buildings. So making sure that our buildings are as energy efficient as possible and also where we construct housing. Our goal in the city of Olympia is to have housing and amenities located within a quarter mile, which will increase ridership in vehicle alternative um, multimodal transportation, people taking the bus, people walking, et cetera. There's also discussions about ensuring that new construction be electricity only and not natural gas because we know natural gas is still an emitter of greenhouse gas emissions. And then lastly, we've adopted a sea level rise response plan regionally with our other jurisdictions. Now we need to move forward with the plan for how we will actually administer that, how we will finance that and take those actions so we can adapt to sea level rise. Thank you, Jessica. Um, and then we'll start with you for the next question. How do you harmonize tax exemptions for builders and developers of market rate and above uh, downtown properties with the loss of income for needed city services. How would you propose to resolve these issues? Sure, it's a great question. So we currently have multifamily tax exemption and affordable housing tax exemptions for the city. We started that, well, we saw people actually utilizing that after the recession, and I think First, anytime you have a tax exemption, those need to be reevaluated. Those are usually utilized as an incentive to get something started, to get something going. Now that we're seeing more construction in our downtown, our Land Use and Environment Committee is actually looking at those tax exemptions to see what return for the community at large we're getting for the construction of that housing. We want, of the 20,000 people that will move to Olympia over the next 20 years, we want a quarter of them living in our downtown. So it's made sense to me that we would incentivize the construction of housing downtown. But now what we want to do is incentivize the construction of housing with affordable housing. So I don't think it's unnecessary for us to say, if you're going to get a tax exemption, we need to have some affordable housing units that are a part of that. The separate affordable housing unit tax exemption that we've had, we just now had our very first project take advantage of that, the Merritt Manor off of Pacific, or Martin Way, excuse me. So we need to be taking a look at those and our Land Use Environment Committee is in the process of doing that right now. Okay, thank you. Uh, Phyllis, one minute. Do I want one minute? Well, according to the Joint Legislative uh, Audit Review Committee, these multifamily tax exemptions, it's inconclusive whether they work. But we're living in the area of uh, greatest, well, the era of greatest wealth inequality. So I disagree with Jessica on this 
uh, multifamily tax exemption. I think they need to get rid of it. And um, I hope that maybe next council meeting, she'll make a motion to do that. Um, it pushes other people out of downtown Olympia indirectly because the rest of us are paying for these people. And uh, if we're gonna have tax exemptions, they should go for affordable housing. Okay, thank you. Phyllis, um, we'll continue on uh, with the next question, and you have two minutes. Olympia has a reputation as a progressive city, but we are increasingly becoming a place where low-income working families can't afford to live. A recent publicized event, example, I'm sorry, uh, one mother and her children were forced to leave their small apartment, which was sold uh, and no longer affordable to go and live in a travel trailer with a family member. Um, how do you propose to keep Olympia affordable for working families? Two minutes. Well, this has been a passion of mine and I've been thinking a lot about it uh, over the years. And one of the ideas that I think is pro probably plausible is that um, we need to have a regional approach. All the candidates, I believe, agree about that. It can't be just Olympia uh, focusing on, on all the homelessness for the whole region. But um, when we did Kyoto Village, we had 30 cabins and we had over 20,000 members of our community make that effort a success. And I thought, well, we could do this in another way. Uh, the Campground of America also has a model, and with a b larger house, uh, it would be a bigger building with the laundry, the kitchen, the bathrooms. Uh, we could have heated cabins. Uh, there could be RVs that are surplus. You know, we've got a whole generation of boomers retiring that own RVs. They could be someone's house. We could provide um, services to bus services. And also, we could work on the Capital Land Trust, and that could ensure permanent affordable housing um, and give people a chance to have some equity um, and, and function better in the world. Thank you. Jessica. So it's clear we know that the costs of uh, people's wages have not kept up with the cost of housing. In Olympia, 53% of Olympians are renters. We are the only majority renter city in Thurston County, and 46% of those are cost burden, meaning that they spend more than a third of their income on housing, which means they're more likely and more vulnerable to losing their housing. We've put aside, uh, well, with recent um, tenant evictions in our downtown, we are actually helping them get lo relocated and providing funding for that. And that led us to realize we need to have a fund separately for when people need to be relocated. We know that we're not building enough housing to keep up with population growth. That's not unique to just Olympia. It's happening in Washington state and also across the country. We're hundreds of thousands of units behind. So first we need to be open to construction of new housing, different types of housing, more dense housing. We also need to work with Thurston County Housing Authority, which has the ability to build public housing. And lastly, we need to work to increase workforce development, providing funding and increasing wages. Um, thank you. Um, Phyllis. <laughs> okay, uh, two minutes. During the recent legislative session, the Olympia City Council urged state legislators to enact state laws limiting the ability of citizens to legally challenge certain city ordinances they believe to be illegal and detrimental to their neighborhoods. Do you support this kind of legislation? Why or why not? Oh, absolutely not. In fact, I spent three months following, uh, this is House Bill 1923 that you're referring to. Uh, the Olympia City Council hired a lobbyist, I believe they paid $3,000 a month um, to insert language in uh, House Bill 1923 that cuts your right to appeal. Um, citizens have a right to uh, appeal a land use zoning decision, uh, especially when it affects their residents. Uh, we, we need people to appeal for a variety of reasons. Uh, the decision may make your property a flood uh, problem. It could uh, affect the property value. Um, in our eagerness to provide housing, we need to be practical. We need to be democratic. 
and we need to address the problem. There are a variety of ways to provide affordable housing. The comprehensive plan had planned for the 20,000 people coming in. There's the three nodes. It's served by bus every 15 minutes. And yet we came up with the missing middle, which um, it diverted a lot of that uh, population to the low density areas without a, a SEPA check. Now that's the Environmental Policy Act, which protects citizens from uh, a variety of environmental factors. Uh, we need uh, adequate schools uh, so that your schools aren't crowded. You don't want your streets all packed with uh, cars where uh, kids could get killed or el elderly could be run over. Um, there's so many things that go into residential land use uh, zoning decisions and with more eyes, including our citizenry, we can d develop the area where everyone can enjoy it. Thank you. I believe I, um, I'd like to give you two minutes to answer that Thank too, because I got out of sync there. Okay, Sorry about that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for the question. So House Bill 1923 passed this legislative session, and the bill was much larger than just this component. So it's really trying to get at increasing housing around transportation centers. And this component is specifically to what I brought up before, which was that we're not building enough housing. Housing is inextricably linked to homelessness. We're in a homelessness crisis and a housing crisis. And the legislature put specific criteria for when this actually could apply, when a SEPA appeal uh, would, not be, would not be able to be applied. The criteria, there's about 12 different types of housing that can be built. And there's specific requirements for that. That's when these only would actually be able to be eligible. And it's all around infill development. So a development that the state legislature has determined is conducive to the requirements of the Growth Management Act, allowing us to have people living within a quarter mile of transit, making them more likely to actually ride the bus, take multimodal transportation, thus enabling us to lower our greenhouse gas emissions and have a more multimodal family, uh, friendly lifestyle it supports the goals of the Growth Management Act. That's why our state legislators, including Representative Beth Dolio, supported it. And I'll also say that it wasn't just the Olympia City Council that supported it. Many labor organizations and environmental groups also supported that legislation. Thank you. Uh, the last question, um, Jessica, I guess it's, it's to you uh, again. Um, the issue of homelessness is well publicized. How would you propose to address some of the underlying causes such as poverty, job loss, addictions, mental illness, et cetera? Well, first of all, cities need more revenue to address affordable housing. I testified in the legislature last year on House Bill 1406. That bill passed and is now giving us an additional $330,000 a year for affordable housing. Any city in Washington state is eligible for that. They're also eligible, if they do take it, to get a grant of $100,000 so they can plan a housing action plan and do an assessment of the type of housing they have in our community. We absolutely need more behavioral health support and services. My day job, I'm a health policy analyst for the Washington Association for Community Health, where I work to ensure that all Washington Washingtonians have access to quality health care, regardless of their ability to pay, including mental health. The legislature made a significant focus of mental health services this last legislative session, including the construction of community supports within Washington state. We need to continue as council members to urge our legislators to, legislators to continue those efforts. We also need to work on ensuring that people are getting better wages, that we have workforce development, that we're partnering with the Thurston County Housing Authority so they will build more housing and leveraging our city-owned property, which is one way that we can actually reduce the cost of construction of housing. For instance, when we purchased LBA Woods and we turned the majority of that into a park, we peeled off 10 acres and the city council said, this is the perfect opportunity for affordable housing for families because it's near a park. So we're currently in the process of creating an RFQ for that to be affordable housing in our community. So examples like that is when we can actually get the cost down and get more affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you. Phyllis. Could you repeat the question, please? Sure. The issue of homelessness is well publicized. How would you propose to address some of the underlying causes, poverty, job loss, addictions, mental illness, and so forth? Well, 
Uh, this has been coming a long time, uh, longer than actually my opponent has been alive. Uh, wages have been stagnating. Uh, the jobs have been disappearing. Uh, we need to have a more of a community conversation about this. Uh, the Olympia City Council, to its credit, had some forums about homelessness, but they could have done better by bringing them to the table and just interviewing, you know, how did this happen to you? What, what are your ideas about uh, the cure for it? Um, the main reason that people are falling through the cracks are uh, medical bills are putting them on the street, the uh, job loss and, and the wages are stagnating. And I think that all classes of people need to come together and say, what kind of society do we want to have? And it would be great if the city council would have two-way conversations. Uh, Just Housing has been there quite often trying to get the council's attention. Thank you, Phyllis. Mm -hmm. um, it's time now for closing statements. Jessica, if you'd like to go first. Thank you. It's been an honor serving as your council member, and I am looking forward and excited to continue that service. Thank you for tuning in today. Please visit my website at reelectjessicabateman.com to learn more about me or my campaign, and please remember to vote by November 5th. Phyllis. Hi. Um, I would like for our city government to be more inclusive, and we have been excluded. Right now, we're still paying uh, fees for litigation with the Minnesota Middle, even though we have won four times with the Growth Management Hearings Board. I would like for multifamily uh, tax exemptions to stop for luxury rate uh, market housing and, and market rate housing. I'd like for the City Council to really concentrate where the real needs are. Uh, we've had this uh, tax exemptions for some time. And I'd like to invite people to come to our 2020 legislative session and see what's going on. When I was there, I saw the same line parroted by all of our residents' uh, representatives. They were saying, we need more housing. We need more housing. We need more affordable housing. We need more critical thinkers as representatives. Thank you. Thanks. And thanks to both of you for participating in the League of Women Voters primary election forum for the Olympia City Council position number two. We encourage viewers to vote in the general election November 5th. That's the final day, 2019. Remember, ballots are postage free, so just put your ballot in the mail. The League particularly thanks Thurston Community Media for their ongoing support and assistance. Thank <laughs> you.